Ladies and gentlemen, from our nation's capital, please welcome the United States Army Band Pershing Zone under the baton of our leader and commander, Colonel Andrew Esch. January 25, 1922, General John J. Pershing ordered the formation of the United States Army Band to be the premier musical organization for our nation's senior service. For 96 years, Pershing Zone has maintained a proud tradition of excellence, performing here at home and around the world. From the grandeur of the Capitol steps and the White House lawn, to the battlefields of World War II and the hallowed hills of Arlington National Cemetery, we use music to tell the Army's story and honor the sacrifice of all those who have served our nation. The soldiers you see before you represent more than 185,000 men and women serving in over 140 countries at this very hour, continuing the common thread of selfless service woven through the tapestry of our army from 242 years. Now, would you please stand and join in the singing of our national anthem? Well, once again, good evening and welcome to Brucker Hall. My name is Sergeant First Class Kevin Simpson, your Master of Ceremonies for tonight's concert featuring the United States Army Concert Band. We're also delighted to feature six up and coming conductors who've spent the last week with us here at Pershing Zone working with the band and soaking up all the knowledge and experience they could from our guest clinician, Dr. Mallory Thompson, who you'll hear much more about later. But for now, we're very excited to show the six of them off to you, so let's get right to it. Our first conductor grew up in Orangeburg, South Carolina, and is finishing a doctoral degree in conducting at the University of North Texas. He was just named the Assistant Director of Bands at the University of South Carolina, and before that, he spent nine years as the Director of Bands at the Oak Ridge High School in Orlando, Florida, where he earned the FMEA Tom Bishop Award, given each year to the director whose efforts brought about the most positive change in the organization. The piece he conducts tonight was written by Malcolm Arnold in 1957. It's a series of four dances inspired by the island of Scotland, with depictions of everything from rolling green hills and peaceful meadows to a rollicking and somewhat overindulgent night at a Glasgow pub. Be sure to watch out for the inebriated bassoon in movement two. Please welcome to the stage to conduct four Scottish dances, Jack Eady Jr.
Well, those of you with sharp eyes in the audience may have noticed that up here on stage, one of these things is not quite like the others. We put out a call for reinforcements to shore up our numbers this week, and our friends at the Air Force were there to answer the call. So I'd like to thank Technical Sergeant Mike Semprola for joining us in the clarinet section this week. And we're not giving him back. <laughs> well, our next conductor recently began work as the director of bands at Winona State University in Winona, Minnesota. Before that, she earned her master's and doctoral degrees from Arizona State University. She's also no stranger to the military band world. In 2014, she went to Finland on a Fulbright grant and worked with four of the five Finnish army bands, as well as numerous student and honor band groups across that country. This evening, she'll present music from the 1944 Broadway hit, On the Town. Leonard Bernstein's musical depicts 24 hours in the life of three sailors out on shore leave in World War II New York City. Their time on the town has all the elements you'd expect from three young men given 24 hours of freedom. Their feet have barely hit solid ground before all three sailors have fallen madly in love with three different women. But the real magic in Bernstein's production is how movement and dance generate emotion and drive the plot forward in the same way that the singing does. So here are three dances from On the Town and our second featured conductor, Dr. Melanie Brooks. Thank you. 
Our third conductor was just named the assistant conductor of the Alabama Symphony Orchestra after earning degrees from the University of Michigan and the Eastman School of Music. His duties include directing the Alabama Symphony Youth Orchestra, and he is a fierce champion of music as both an educational tool and as a vehicle for social change. He's organized performances for a variety of humanitarian causes. Tonight, he'll present the Suite Francaise by Darius Millot. It was written in 1944, the same year as Bernstein's On the Town, and with an inspiration similar to the four Scottish dances we heard earlier. Millot wanted each of the five movements in the piece to represent a French province, more specifically, the five French provinces in which the Allied armies fought with the French resistance to liberate France during World War II. As he said, I wanted the young Americans to hear the popular melodies of those parts of France where their fathers and brothers fought to defeat the invaders. Here to present four movements of Millot's musical tribute to France is conductor Kevin Fitzgerald.
Our next conductor is beginning his final year of his DMA studies at the University of Michigan. And before that, he was the associate director of bands at the Northern Arizona University. While he was with the Lumberjacks, he had a variety of conducting responsibilities, including leading the NAU marching band, which I now know is considered the only retro rock college marching band in the country, at least according to their website. <laughs> Tonight, he'll present selections from the famous or perhaps infamous Carmina Burana, a musical setting of 24 poems written by European scholars and monks in the 11th to 13th centuries. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sure, what could be more scandalous than a bunch of 13th century monastic texts? Well, what makes the writing so intriguing is the subject matter of the poems, which is decidedly un-monk-like. Rather than pious devotionals, we get love poetry, bacchanals, and body drinking songs. And surrounding it, in the opening and closing movements, 
is the theme of fortune in all its fickle glory, turning its enormous wheel so that each of us in turn feels its blessings and its curses. Transcribed by the former chief arranger for the Army Field Band, John Krantz, here are selections from Carl Orff's Carmina Burana, conducted by Elliot Tackett.
If you'd like to learn more about Pershing Zone, head over to our website, usarmyband.com, where you'll find information about our upcoming performances, uh, bios about our members, and links to hundreds of archived performances. You've still got a few Fridays to enjoy our sunsets with a soundtrack, including one tomorrow night, 
as well as Twilight Tattoo and our upcoming 1812 Overture Extravaganza. So be sure to come see us again before the summer draws to a close. Well, next we'd like to feature Travis Higa, who grew up in Kaneohe, Hawaii, and is currently pursuing a DMA in conducting at Michigan State University, which is apparently the place to be for wind conductors, since I believe that makes four already tonight. When I was looking for information about Travis, I came across a website from his early days as a teacher at Glenbrook Middle School. It's called rateyourteacher.com. And if the idea of candid adolescent feedback doesn't scare you, then I don't know what will. But you'll be pleased to know that Travis impressed even the harshest of critics, earning comments like, we all miss him so much, especially his positive and enthusiastic personality and his love and passion for music. High praise indeed. Joining us now to conduct four more movements from Carmina Burana, including an angry tirade from a very drunk abbot, please welcome Travis Higa.
Well, we've got one more for you tonight. Our, our final guest conductor grew up in Miami, Florida, and has earned a variety of degrees, including bachelor's degrees in music performance and biology from Jackson State University, as well as a master's degree in clarinet from LSU. He's currently pursuing a doctorate from the University of Mississippi, and is an instructor of music there, as well as second clarinetist in the Mississippi Symphony Orchestra. And on top of all of that, he managed to secure a $500,000 endowment for the Jackson State Band Program. Tonight, he'll present William Schumann's George Washington Bridge, a programmatic work written for band in 1950. Schumann lived in New York and said, there are few days when I do not see the George Washington Bridge. It has for me an almost human personality, and that personality is astonishingly varied. He illustrates that variety with a sort of musical arch, presenting three contrasting themes and then bringing the first two back in reverse order so that it's as if we're driving along the bridge itself. Please welcome to the stage to conduct George Washington Bridge, Mr. Lowell Hollinger.
Tonight's concert is being streamed live on YouTube, and I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge all of you watching at home. For the tech savvy among you, in person and on the web, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at US Army Band. So tag us in your photos and let us know what you thought of the show. Well, this week, we had the tremendous honor and privilege of working with one of the wind band world's true treasures. Dr. Mallory Thompson has taught at Northwestern University for more than 20 years as the director of bands and professor of conducting. Her conducting resume is intimidating to say the least. She's basically done all that there is to do in the band world, though that has not dampened her enthusiasm or her thirst for growth one bit. She's also been a great friend to the military band. She's worked with us on multiple occasions and many of her students have gone on to serve in the bands, which she cites as a source of great pride. Unfortunately, there's only time for her to conduct one piece with us tonight, but I encourage all of you to join us on the west steps of the Capitol tomorrow, where she will be the guest of honor. For now, please welcome to the stage to close our program with the third movement from Howard Hansen's Second Symphony, Dr. Mallory Thompson. Thank you. 